Hey there Saints, God bless you. Welcome back to Love Has A Name YouTube channel. My name is Brian and today is Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. In this video, I want to share with you a prophetic word from the Lord to Lana Vosser. This one is dated January 29th, 2024. Make sure you look in the description so that you can see how you can learn more about Lana Vosser's wonderful ministry. She is based out of Australia. Amen. Now, Lana Vassar is a great example of someone that I've noticed over the years. The Lord uses the gift, the office of the prophet um, regarding prophecy strongly from encounters. So the prophetic words that the Lord gives her come many times from encounters, from visions. And there's even a feeler element, uh, which I've talked about before where we'll be reading it and you can tell that she says she says all around me I could feel all around me um, this is what I heard see so there's like this feeler element amen as you can tell prophets speak in different ways and what I mean by that is that the Lord uses them differently there are some who get deep deep downloads like uh, Jay Green of JGM International as you know <laughs> not on YouTube anymore but she's on Rumble. She gets very detailed prophetic words. Amanda Grace also gets them in this similar fashion. And then there are some, um, there are some who are prophets who don't, who don't seem to get words in the way that we maybe are used to them, kind of, you know, like Hank Kuhneman or, um, or those that I come in, I bring you regular words. There are some where the words that they receive are more either on the personal level or the Lord doesn't really have them speaking for whatever reason at the time unto nations and so forth, or at least that I know that I have that I've been able to find online, I haven't been able to find it. And so I just want you to to understand and see that even in this, the Lord is using uh, using a variety of ways. And Lanavasra is a voice that the Lord uses to bring a lot of encouragement a lot of edification and it comes forth through encounters and visions so you know she has an intimate relationship with the lord but the words may not you know it may not have to do with uh the nation this nation or that nation it may not have to do with um future events like we may hear from other prophets but you must know that that is okay and if you truly know Oh, thank you, Lord. If you truly know that it is the Holy Spirit, if you truly believe the voice you're hearing, uh, the prophetic voice that you're listening to speaks by the Holy Spirit, then you're not going to, um, you're not going to criticize the way that it's being spoken, whether they're explaining, elaborating as they go, whether they're speaking more vision related, more dream related. You know, a lot of times people will question things and say, you know, why do you do this? And this person should not do this. And, um, you know, someone might say, oh, Manuel Johnson, he should just read the word and not give any of his of his uh, insight, etc. I've heard the same thing with me. OK, no, no, I'm, this, this may hurt some people. This may hurt the religious spirit in you. But when people say that, what they are saying indirectly is. I want to hear what God spoke to you, but if you stop to elaborate or teach or bring revelation, what that person is saying is you are saying that that prophet or that prophetic voice is not speaking by the spirit and they should just speak what they received as a download. So you're not acknowledging that the Holy Spirit may lead that voice to teach because teaching is a part of a prophetic voice calling many times and the office of a prophet and revelation is prophetic revelatory it goes together and so when people say you shouldn't do that because you are interrupting the word of god that to me doesn't make any sense and that's that's an immature perspective because it is the person the vessel prayer flag and only speak for myself if i don't feel like the lord wants me to say anything i won't say anything I'll just keep going. If I feel like he wants me to stop, to touch on something, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. 
So people, when they don't like it, they're not acknowledging, nor are they recognizing, nor are they discerning that the Holy Spirit is the one leading. All right. Now I get it. I can't speak for anyone else. I can only speak for myself. But hopefully that is somewhat helpful to you. Amen. All right. Well, with that in mind, let's step into the presence of the Lord. This word is not going to be too long. I would say it is um, about half as long as her normal prophetic words from the Lord. So this should be exciting. Let's get ready to pray. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your presence, which is already here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May you have your way through this broadcast, through this video. May the right people hear it and may their hearts be wide open to hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through these through these prophetic words that you've given to your daughter Lana Vosser and through anything you may have me touch on O Lord we give you all the praise we give you all the glory and we ask you to continually allow your presence and your anointing to be made manifest and to be tangible Lord Thank you, Lord, for touching us, for filling us, encouraging us, correcting us. And oh, that there may be a greater, no a greater number of people to receive the correction so they can actually grow. We don't know it all. I don't know it all. We know very little. And blessed are those who are humble enough to recognize this and always have a teachable spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, prophetic word is entitled, I heard the Lord speaking, and he said, Eyes up, eyes front. January 29th, 2024. Lana Vosser says, <clears throat> Recently I had a vision, and I heard the Lord speaking, Eyes up, eyes front. When I heard him speak these words, I knew that it was a call to action and no distraction. The Lord began to show me that many have been feeling a tug in many directions and things vying for their focus and for their attention. Ooh, I can totally raise my hand and confirm that is true. Distractions, distractions, distractions. <laughs> Anyone else feel like distractions you know um it's okay you know to admit if you feel comfortable let me let us know in the comments you just say you know yes i can feel distractions trying to pull my focus away hey i'm literally saying it happens to me amen that's okay god is so loving so gracious all right so let's hear what else he has to say about this now lana says i saw many people turning around and looking behind them they were looking at past seasons and there was a longing for what was whoa <clears throat> whoa Oof. there were others looking back at what worked in a previous season or in previous seasons and trying to implement it into this season and i could feel the weight of distraction and the lure the lure to look back as I could feel that lure to look back, I heard the Lord say, Look up. We are in a very significant time in the body of Christ right now. And there is very specific direction and divine intel that the Lord is releasing. The Lord is calling his people to ascend and come up higher. And part of that coming up higher is coming up out of the old season coming up out of ashes and into beauty and coming up out of living by what is seen in the natural realm and coming up higher into seeing as he sees in an unprecedented way there is a laying aside of all things that have hindered and in and and in ascending the mountain of the lord in first love adoration in faith 
and worshiping in spirit and in truth. Again, I heard the words around me, eyes up, eyes front. As I leaned into his heart and listened, I heard the Lord say, steward your sight. Wow. Now more than ever, it is imperative that as God's people, we are aligning ourselves with how he sees. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 surrounded me. Oof, this is one of those moments where see Lana Vasa talks in this way, it's fascinating. <coughs> and I know the Lord, the Lord works in such mysterious ways, so I have no problem with it. And so I want to continue to encourage you. Don't have any issues or problems with hearing people express the spiritual experiences or things that they see or hear or smell or taste or sense or touch don't think oh you can't smell the presence of the lord you know something like that because well i can tell you at least in my experience i have smelled it twice and it is nearly impossible to describe but it is amazing don't say there's no such thing as oh i feel this i feel that because you may you may hear someone say that and it's it's not that they're trying to be disgenuine you know or or deceitful I, i'm sure there are people like that but again Hopefully you're watching the fruit and you can tell because you know the fruit of the Lord and you can compare and the Lord can help you discern. But allow the Holy Spirit to be creative because the Holy Spirit in this great next move of God will do things that we will go beyond our comprehension. And if we're so quick to judge and reject, little do we know that we will highly likely be coming against the very work of the Holy Spirit who has been given to us to not only lead us into all truth but to guide us and to be that foretaste of glory that down payment that deposit of glory amen it's something I'm gonna have to continually um, repeat because a lot of people have religious you know religious um mindsets and we're all just kind of breaking off more and more layers and so forth <clears throat> i um, i'm listening because I'm, I'm hearing strong winds outside today it's been a very overcast a very somber type of day it's been like a stillness almost all day and Okay, so I'm uh, right there. I, I muted. I have some rain sounds, you know, using technology to give you some rain sounds. But there's been a lot of wind outside. Anyway, let's keep going. Colossians 3.2 surrounded me. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above. The heavenly things. Oh. Not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. I then heard the Lord speak. Do not grieve what was. Do not look back with longing of what was. Do not allow distraction in your midst because of what is happening around you. It is time to look up. Look up higher. Look forward with great expectation. For I am inviting you into partnering with me in great exploits. Look to me, lift up your eyes and behold me, and cultivate great expectation within your heart for what is to come in me, for my glory is upon you. My power and my glory will be revealed in a greater way than you have ever seen this year. Wow. Oh, wow. Thank you, God. Draw close to me and listen to the words of my heart speaking over you. Listen to what I'm speaking to you and listen to where I am leading you. Mm -mm -mm. It is time to let go of what was and embrace the expansion 
Oh, thank you, Lord. That's confirmation for me on something. It is time to embrace the expansion. Wow, the Lord repeats it. Gotta be super important. Let's type it in the comments. God says, come on, type it in the comments. God says, embrace the expansion. Amen. Now Lana continues. She says, from the Lord, part of the ascension is letting go of what was and embracing what I am releasing. Embracing what I am doing. Embracing where I am leading you. I know many of you are feeling uncomfortable in the transition. But look to me, says God, for I am leading you into greater expansion, for I am deepening your dependence in me as I take you higher. Wow, thank you, God. I am strengthening your foundation and I am fortifying you in me. For I am expanding you and calling you to make room and prepare to pivot when I say to make room for my glory. Whoa. There is a great assault against many of you to bring distraction and to take your eyes off me. Lift up your voice. Worship. Worship. Worship me. Praise me. Remember that praise is a weapon. And as you worship and praise me, the heavy fog will lift. Oh, I just got to pause there and say, yes, Lord. Amen. Saints, this is something I've shared with you before. Worshiping and praising God turns your attention, turns your focus, turns your con conscious awareness towards God towards Jesus, towards the Holy Spirit. And when you do this, you connect because where your focus goes, not only does energy flow, but you will eventually connect with anything that you focus on. When you are focusing on the Lord, you are emitting frequencies. And by focusing on the Lord, it is another way of pursuing him and seeking him. And the Lord says, seek and you shall find. So if you are releasing your frequencies just by your focus, just by your thoughts, just by your words, just by your heart and your emotions. Why? Because emotion, break it out. It's energy in motion. Okay. Energy in motion equals emotion. So when you're putting your emotions, oh God, oh God, I love you. God, you are so good. You have been awesome today, Lord. Wow, thank you for what you did for me here. Oh God, thank you, you answered my prayer. Lord God, I read this text message and thank you for what you did for this person. Oh Lord God, I read this testimony of something you did to so for someone 17 years ago. You are awesome. There are so many reasons to rejoice. And when you bring that delight, when you actively love God through worship, through praise, <laughs> through de declarations, through testifying, and just rejoicing in the Lord, you are releasing focused energy <laughs> with frequency and, and vibrations. And this is the scientific part, but it's, all it is is your love and affection towards God. And what you're doing is you connect with God. And when you connect with God, you open up a two-way street. I'm going to just put it in simple words. A two-way street, a two-way flow. So now the Lord has an avenue because you've sought him. He will also allow, him, allow you to find him. The Lord says in James, in the book of James, draw near to me. Draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. You literally have a step one, and then it tells you the result of that step. Draw near to God. Result, he will draw near to you. Okay, sometimes, how do we miss these simple things sometimes? Well, hopefully just me breaking it down in this way is helpful to you. Okay, 
So you draw near to the Lord, and all of a sudden, He will draw near to you. And you do this so consistently, repetitively throughout your day, you'll find that there are moments where maybe at that, you know, in a few minutes, um, over a few minutes or seconds, you're perhaps not even thinking of the Lord, maybe you're grocery shopping or something, and all of a sudden, boom, you'll get a download. Boom, you get a revelation. Boom, the presence of God will just come on you. Boom, all of a sudden, you just feel joy. Well, you have opened up a portal. You have opened up a two way avenue a two-way street with the lord so now anytime he wants you boom he can just show up <laughs> because you've cultivated and developed in your own time in seeking the lord oh hallelujah all right don't want won't go too deep into that but praise and worship is powerful so the lord says the haze okay regarding the heavy fog that will lift from praising and worshiping. Now he says, the haze will not remain. Draw close to me, eye to eye. Look deeply in my eyes and see. I am leading you in new pathways. I am leading you into new terrains and new territories. But you must let go of what was in order to embrace what is and what is coming listen closely for my strategy and my direction and know that there is great peace and great empowerment in the new ways i am leading you eyes up eyes front the only time you are to look back is to rejoice in what I have done and to remember my great works. Ooh, ooh, I got to stop and just praise the Lord. Yes, God. <laughs> I'm so excited because this is something that he's had me share for a long time. And now I'm like hearing it as a confirmation. You know, look at that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The only time you ought to look back is to rejoice in what God has done and to remember his great works oh thank you god but many of you are being caught up in the longing for what was but i am calling you to shift your focus and your expectation for what is and will be glory to glory strength to strength it's time to ascend and arise in expectation you must steward your sight and steward your expectation as you steward your sight and expectation in faith holiness hope look at that god's talking about hope that's right okay so don't 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 come at me with all this hopium stuff because god disagrees with you amen renew your mind praise the lord that's for somebody out there okay the lord said as you steward your sight and expectation in faith holiness hope and purity Oh, what a fragrant offering it is to me. Mm -mm -mm. Love always hopes. Love always hopes. What do, maybe there's one, two, three, maybe there's nobody, maybe there's one. I know there's at least one. That's if that person still even watches this channel. They were saying, enough hopium, Brother Brian. And they were, you know, going on this negative, you know, spill. And it's just like, uh, I don't get it. Like when <sighs> I could spend months and months and months and months and months nonstop testifying of what God has done in my life and things he's done in the lives of people around me. When you're focused on all the goodness of God, you don't lose hope because your focus is your connection with the living God. And because you open up a two-way avenue, he makes himself real to you. And when you know he's real, you're experiencing the word of God. Because the word of God is not the Bible, the scriptures. The word of God is what the scriptures says is a person. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. Jesus is the living word of God. The Bible 
is the scriptures. <laughs> now, of course, someone could say, oh, but it's still the word of God. Like, I get it on the most basic level. Yes, that is true. But I'm trying to take you into a higher level or a deeper level of understanding. The, the, the religious people will say, the scriptures say this, 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 this. But the spiritual person, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2, talks about fleshly, carnal versus spiritual. Okay, The spiritual person, according to God's definition, again, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, the spiritual person doesn't just say, it is written this and this and this and this. They not only know the word, but the word is so much in them that they experience the living word in a living relationship with God. Again, doesn't mean they're perfect. No, no, no. But it means they've experienced God. They have gained experiential knowledge. So they talk about what they are living with Christ. Whereas the religious and the carnal Pharisees only talk about what the scriptures say, but they have no concept of God actually talking to them. They'll say, oh, God will only talk to you through his word. That is the most basic level. If that is where a person is, my goodness, you know, basically spiritual milk, basically diapers still. You can be 50 years in ministry. But if you haven't gotten past that, you haven't grown. What are you doing, man? You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, just a little joke there because it's not about judging anyone. It's, it's to say that there is more. And the Bible says there is more. Just like Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Pharisees were always attacking Jesus. And Jesus says to them, and, and I'm going to paraphrase, the very law of Moses, speak of me. Okay, that's Jesus talking. Speak of me. Yet you, he's speaking to the Pharisees, refuse to come to me that you may have life. He was differentiating from the law and from himself, the person, the living word of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for that revelation at this very moment to help your people. <laughs> Okay, the end of the word. Let's, let's finish up. <clears throat> God says, I am not standing on the sideline. I am present with you. Thank you, Lord. You're just confirming what you had me say. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Ask me to help you steward your sight, says God. For it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. You must be vigilant in your vision. Vigilant in your vision. Eyes up, eyes front. It's my call to action. My army. I am gathering my army and aligning you in ferocious focus to move into all I have for you and to partner with me to see my glory and my name manifest in the earth. I am raising up a focused bride who beholds me and lives in the ferocious focus of faith and sees as I see. Eyes up, eyes front. Steward your sight and be vigilant in your vision of how I see, for you are entering unprecedented days of seeing me. Oh, thank you, God, I receive that. Of revelation of my word, of divine intel, and my strategies to build with me and see my glory come. Wow, thank you, God. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for this word, God. Oof, I bless your people in Jesus' name, and I pray that they are receiving this word, Lord. Lord, I feel your anointing increasing on my hands, Lord, so in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oof, I release it unto them now in Jesus' name. I release the anointing. I release the presence of God now in Jesus' name. And I release the glory in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. All right, saints. That was the word. Lana Vosser's information is down below. If you enjoyed the video, praise the Lord. Hit the like for me. 
hit subscribe if you're not subscribed just yet. Let me know if any of the examples, the illustrations that I shared helped you because that is always very encouraging. Um, I love to know when people are receiving it, okay? And I will never take the glory. I don't want the glory. You couldn't force it on me. My God, Jesus, he gets all the glory. But I want to rejoice and know that he's helping you. Amen? That's why I encourage you to comment. Praise God. All right, see you soon. Until the next video. Bye-bye.